Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. Um, I've just come down to the garage today just to give a little roundup, maybe a little roundup, and to possibly start a job. I don't have any major projects on at the moment. Uh, the weather's been very cold, and I've just been doing a little bit of tidying up and some little tinkering jobs, of, of which I've showed videos. I don't have any major projects, but I do have a little sort of un, little bit of unfinished business that I want to take care of. And it, I'm looking past the sedan at that engine down the bottom end of the garage there, beyond the vacuum cleaner. Let's go down and have a look at it. This engine is the engine that I was running in my truck. Um, I recently fitted the old 59 flatty to see if the see if it ran okay with that crank change. But this engine is the one. It's a French flathead. This is the one that I started to build as a higher performance engine, but I had to abandon the build because I went th through from the valve pocket into the water jacket. I did a repair using a 1 8 NPT plug and then built it as a more or less stock engine um, French crank um, French rods French pistons in 7 bores 30 thou over one sixty thou piston in a bore that was damaged that I bored out and that's a Ford piston but I had to clearance it. There's a video about it. And the, the other thing I did was I took the French truck cam and modified it to run a crab distributor. Um, it has a 10 inch clutch and it, it's a good running engine. It runs fine despite the odd bores and uh, used nature of the parts that were used to put it back together. But the basic premise was to build it to see if the repair um, lasted. And it did seem to last because it's been running in the truck now. It had been running in the truck for approximately a year before I took it out. So what's my idea? Um, this is a good running engine and I have that crank that I have repaired the burnt up thrust race in. So what I am going to do is um, put this engine on the engine stand, pull the heads, pull the rods and pistons. I'm going to take the valve out of the the one where I damaged it so I can do a, a visual inspection of the valve uh, pocket and the repaired area just to see if there looks to be any deterioration in that area so I'll take the pistons and rods out now I was just thinking that I could leave them in because I could just change the crank but I want to fit that crank in a block and look at it and measure the um, end float so that's what I'll do I'll take the heads off all the pistons out rods out um, crank out and then put the other crank in. I will check all the clearances, make sure it spins okay, and then reassemble it using all the same rods and pistons in all the same holes and put it all back together and make it into a running engine again. And then when it's in a running engine, I will have to run it. Now, I only have two vehicles that are currently on the road. One of them is the sedan, here's the engine in the sedan, and one of them is the truck which is parked outside. Now, it's quite a lot easier to change the engine in the sedan. So what I might do is just put it in the sedan to test it. Give it a run around, and then I'll be able to draw a line under that crank and say that that crank is okay, if it runs okay. Or I'll put it in the truck, one or the other. This vehicle or the truck will receive this engine with the other crank. 
When I've driven it and proved that it's okay, I will then consider what I want to do then moving forward, which might involve um, building a higher performance engine, like I intended to in the first place. Because I could do with a nice engine in there, not a racing engine, this is my 33 coupe. I could do with a nice engine in there, nice reliable engine. This is my racing engine which either might stay in here or could go back in the roadster. And then I need an engine to go either in here or in the roadster, you know. Another engine similar to this. What I'll probably do is build an engine that is like this was before I took it out to three and three eighths. In other words, a three and five sixteenths motor, four inch stroke, um, you know, and twin carbs and stuff. Not a racing engine, just a mildly hopped up flathead. So there's lots and lots of ideas going through my mind. Um, it's the middle of winter and um, I feel like I need to have something to play about with and th this is going to be it for a little while. Okay, so that's my little intro to um, my next little round of work which, like I said, focuses around that engine there. And the first thing to do is to test that repaired crank and see if it's a viable crank if it is i might be able to use it okay thanks very much take care and i'll bring you back when there's more to show cheers then bye hello um i just wanted to share a observation i've just put my leveler on there and it's the first time i've used it since i modified it and um this fits well this fits well and this works really well. It's really nice to use. Ever so easy. And with just the right amount of um, sort of resistance, you know, to make the ratchet work. But it's not heavy by any means. That's really good. Nice and adjustable. So I just wanted to share that because I did show the... Uh, level of mods but never showed it being what being used there we go nice good cool man there we go first little bit of uh, positive feedback on the recent uh, tinkering jobs I'll um, bring you back when there's more to show there's the engine on the stand I've got a, a table ready there to receive parts and I've got a table ready there to receive parts so I'm gonna slow just take that I'm gonna take the heads and the inlet manifold off. I'll crack the manifold bolts with the ratchet. Go under the um, vacuum pipe. I don't know how old this hammer is, but uh, I just noticed it the other day. It belongs to a Mr. Hands Off. Hands Off. <laughs> There's a thread on the Ford barn about getting these off. And uh, the gentleman couldn't get it off, and, every, and I replied, and other people replied and said, as long as all the bolts are out, a simple tap like that should loosen it. And he said, oh, they found a bolt, you know, one of these bolts here that was still in. So that was lucky, they could have broke something, couldn't they? This has got a nice, simple PCV installation look underneath. Works well. Yeah, it looks nice inside. I'll get the camera and show you. Looks okay, doesn't it? For a... This has been in my truck for a year. 
This is running my truck for you. These are all French valves. You can see the very light valve springs. Um, I think that one there was the one that went through to the water jacket. I'm not sure. Oh no, it was an exhaust, I think. I'll have to look on the video. Yeah, I'll, I'll, t I'll take the heads off anyway. So, can you see down there, look, that, that there just leads into the timing chest. It's just a, a drain. It isn't like the other ones which lead through to that um, that vent area, the road draft tube area. It looks okay inside. It looks okay. This was run without an oil filter, of course, in the truck. Okay. Yeah. Nice one. Okay. I'll uh, I'll get the heads off. On, on the um, 59A heads, this bolt and this bolt is an intermediate length. So that bolt and that bolt, and the same on the other side, are long bolts that have been shortened. So I'm just going to put a little dot on that one there, and that one. And these. So that I can, you know, when I'm putting it back together, I can look for those ones and put those in those locations. There's, there's a short, an intermediate, there's a short, an intermediate, and a long. I was going to um, get those handles that I, I made, but um, it came off anyway. There's that head. Little bit of stuff in there, look. Bit of mess in the water jacket. It's a good job I didn't turn it over. Look, it's still full of oil. I've got to drain the oil. Okay, that's next then. Hmm. <laughs> Can you see where um, the pistons have been damaged by somebody in the past? This is the 60 thou piston that I put in. The other pistons, well, I can't see much on that one. I mean... This looks okay, doesn't it? It doesn't look... Looks like the motor's been running well because it doesn't look particularly sort of coked up. All the bores look nice. You know, there's nothing wrong with that bore, is there? Well, other than historic rust uh, staining. Yeah, a little bit of historic rust staining, I think. That was a fresh bore, that was. There's some little bits and pieces just fell in from when I pulled the heads off. Yeah, it's looking okay. Like I say, a bit of damage. Probably from um, uh, trying to free up. This is the engine I got from Spalding, thinking about. Yeah, this engine was seized. And I think somebody had previously tried to free it up. Hence the, hence the hammer marks on the pistons. But this tr this engine ran well in my truck. It's, it, it was nice as well, you know, because it's got the four-inch stroke crank. Okay, I will. Um, I'll stop filming now, and I'll put my phone on charge. But what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll drain the oil out, and I'll get this valve out, 
and have a look. I might flash back through the videos and see if it was this one or that one. But uh, I'll get it out anyway. If it's not, I'll take the other one out. Okay. Righto. I'll see you later when there's more to show. Cheers then. This is the valve that we're concerned with, this one here. I've got two tools. This tool, which is a picker vance, which is a British made thing. And there's a lot of subtle shaping around here, around that area there, which you don't get on some of the tools. And this is a piece of wire, which is a bale of um, a distributor. I'm just going to put the brakes on the wheels. Around that area there is a groove in the guide. That gets pushed into the groove in the guide. And you push it in like that and you use that block there to lever against hang on a minute I'm just kind of preempting this by I'm gonna hook that in there can you see the hole that's hooked in this goes in press push pull okay there's that right now hopefully this should just all pop out now. Okay. There's the valve. You know, looks in, looks in, well, I hope it looks in good condition. Yeah, it looks, you know, it looks, looks in good condition. Okay. So that's out. That's the area that was that's the area that was repaired. That there, where you can see a little dimple, is the middle part of a plug, and I fitted that plug and then ground the ground it away a little bit. I can see a small amount of I don't know rust or something just there. But I can't see, like, I don't know what I can see to be honest. I don't know what that discoloration is below it and up here. It's just um, a little bit of carbon, I think. So I'm just going to. I'm going to just wipe this. Yeah, that's just a very bit, little bit of very light carbon. But I can't see. I mean, maybe I'm seeing what I want to see. I can't see a massive amount of leakage or anything. All I can see is a little bit of rust, which is, bear in mind that that is like a, a just a mild steel plug that I wound in. I drilled it one eighth NP2 and wound that plug in. To be honest, I don't, I don't know what I can expect to see. But I didn't detect any problem with leakage on this engine. So we'll say that's okay to continue to run. This engine has core shift and that's why that went through there. Okay, so what I think I might do is just put that valve back in. There's no reason to have it out. So there is the... And again, fitting is the opposite of removal. I'll give you a little hint. Fitting is the opposite of removal, but when you put it in, you want to. Can you see that that groove there is clearly visible through the coils of the spring? For instance, you don't want to put it in like that. Well, you're not, you're not going to be able to put your tool on that on that groove. You want it like that. So that valve's going in there. Bang. I've got the clip in my left hand. 
there's the tool going in can be a little bit of, the camera's slightly in my way so I'll give it a go anyway just do it by feel that's it and you have a really good look and make sure you've got the clip in the right place because it is possible to get it in the wrong place and that is in the right place okay so that's past the inspection then so that's good my hood when filming I don't think I think it's a little bit rude you know I don't think it's very nice but uh, it's a bit cold in the garage today so uh, I'll just wear it for my own comfort if you don't mind Okay, I'll show you a trick in a minute. This clutch is coming off and it's going to be put on again soon. We've got three bolts all the same. They're all captive now and that, that will that will stop the pressure plate from releasing its to, the, to its full extent which means that you can get the bolts in and out a bit easier well get them in easier because you can start the threads more fully sometimes when you're trying to put a clutch on you can't get the um, you can't get the bolt to start, but that, that works okay, that does. This is also handy as well if it's able to rotate like this. Having it up on end makes it a comfortable height as well. Now these bolts are specific clutch bolts and over there I've got a tub with the sump pan bolts, the oil pan bolts and I've got a tub with the head bolts so I'm going to put these in with the head bolts so they don't get them mixed up with the oil pan bolts.
Oh, this is that one that I had to um, machine down. Maybe it ain't okay. Maybe it isn't okay. I'll show you what I can see. Can you see that polished area there, look? And there. And there. So I think these are touching the bolt heads. Okay. And this wire's a bit thin, I'd say, as well. That's um, MIG welding wire. Far down, can you see? Not very far. Look down there. See that? Put that socket in the crank drilling there, so that I can undo the, undo those. See that? That's locked it now. Turn these bolt heads down. Oops, a daisy, that one's tight. I've got some of them Chevy bolts which might be a bit thinner, I just don't know. I might not be able to use that clutch plate. Nonetheless, let's worry about that another day. I just took the plug socket out of there. This is the French one where it's got um, a stud and a nut. And it's 14 mil. It's a metric thread, but the other end of the stud has a, a UNC thread on it. Okay. Oh, okay. This one hasn't got the uh, seal surface on it. This one hasn't got the seal surface on it. The seal surface is a separate piece. Don't don't quite quite get it. If that's factory or, or or what. But that does mean I will have to take that piece off to put it on the other crank. Bit big, but hey. Let's get number one and number five to the top. Like that. Right, these have got pal nuts on them. Not a great setup, really, but hey. I wanted to use a six sided socket on them to save kind of bending the sides over. I don't suppose there's any reason why they shouldn't be reused.
This is actually number five, isn't it, this one? Do. I'll clear a space to put the pistons. A Thor hammer from just round the corner. The shell's gone inside the other piece. Amazing, I don't quite know how it did that. I thought I was just thinking it can't have been running with no shell in it. Okay, there's the shell. Just out of interest, it'd be interesting to see where the rings are. So where are the rings? Okay, one gap's there, one gap's there, and one gap's there. So they are around from each other. Yeah, that's interesting. I've probably got it on video where I put them. So that's number five, isn't it? Okay, right, next thing then, although I'm wondering how long I want to carry on working on it now. Might as well carry on. I've got an hour and 17 on the video. I'll, I'll tap these uh, things down here and undo the mains, the main nuts. This is my uh, troll bait. I don't think people are trolling me, but a couple of people have said, uh, you know, you need to fix that hammer. Well, it ain't like you're going to go, um, you know, really blathering away with it, is it? It, uh, yeah, it's not great, but um, it'll do. Sockets were a good invention, weren't they? You know, when you think how adaptable they are. Good thing about these French mines caps is they've got little um, tabs on them to get a lever under which is a bit of an omission on the American ones the problem is these tab washers kind of get stuck on the threads a bit so
Okay, that crank needs pulling out now. I think the crank's in good condition. It hasn't got very big chamfers on the holes though. And we'll as well lift the crank out and then we can call that the end of the first part of the video, can't we? I'm going to try and do it the way that I've done it before. I'll put, it, I'll put the engine up on end. If you just tip the engine upside down, it should just fall out. Yeah, that's a good idea. First thing I've noted when I'm lifting the cranks in and out is to remove the drip tray so I can put my foot inside it. Also prepare a place for the crank to go. Get too dirty. See what I mean about move, moving the tray so I can stand right next to the crank. Okay, ready? You gotta get a hold of it on a good bit of the crank. There we go. Okay. Bearing, no bearing, no bearing. Okay. Bearing. Bearing. Okay. So let's. I've got to change that bearing there, haven't I? Because it's the um, I've got to use the bearing that I've prepared for the crank that I've repaired. Anyway, that's my method for getting the cranks out, and you could see how easy that was to lift and manoeuvre and put it down. Um, you don't well, you know. I, I just can't think of anything easier than that when you're dealing with such a heavy thing. So there we are. Okay, so there we are. That's um, that's all the crank rods, pistons and heads stripped out of this block. And there's a little bit of something there that fell in off the hammer. In case you spotted that earlier. So there we are. Yeah, there's some little bits and pieces here and there. You know, it looks pretty clean though, doesn't it? The, the cam looks okay, the lifters look okay. Everything looks nice. Okay, the oil is black, but you know, hey, it's oil. There isn't a filter on this engine. That bore there. I think that bore there is the 60 thou bore and you can see there's damage on the bore halfway up but it didn't and it, can you see the damage there as well you can see my boring and hone in there is a little bit leaves a bit to be desired you can see like a pattern I think the hone may, may have been chattering but you know hey we're all on a learning curve maybe I'll flip it up the other way hang on which one was the one with the 60 thou piston uh, I don't know now. Yeah, I think it's this one actually. Yeah, there's um, there's a couple of nicks out the bore. And there's a piece on that side there. Let me point to it. Hang on. There's a piece there. There's like a chunk out the bore there. But it ran, you know. You see this watermark here and there and there's something there as well something down there as well but it ran amazingly 
all the other bores are actually pretty good. If it wasn't for that damage on that one bore, you know, this engine would have been in good condition. Okay, right ho. So that's the basic tear down there. Um, and I can get the other crank out, make sure it's nice and clean, because I did the work on it quite a while ago. So I'll get the other crank out, clean it up, and uh, get it fitted in this block. Righto, we'll call that good then. Thanks very much for joining me in the garage. Take care, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.